Hello students, this is lesson U4AO3C. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to say, I can use properties of sides, angles, and diagonals to identify a rectangle in a geometric proof. All right, so uh, why don't we pause the video for a moment and um, for you to draw the diagram as, as well as to write down the given information into a statement and reason chart like I have here. So welcome back everyone. Okay, hopefully everyone got, get, got a chance to take a look at this. Okay, and my number one uh, advice for anybody who is tackling any kind of geometric proof or any kind of geometry problem is to draw all over the diagram and to come up with relationships um, that is not obvious uh, with just the information that's provided. So the moment you draw things and, and, uh, and are able to make connections, then you are then able to make other kinds of um, assertions that were not previously stated. So here in this case, I noticed that I, I have ZW is perpendicular to uh, WX, which I am going to label with uh, right angle marks because I recognize that perpendiculars form right angles. And I also recognize that XY is perpendicular to ZY. So I'm also going to put in those markings there because I recognize again, uh, perpendicular lines form right angles. I, I also recognize that WX and YZ are congruent to one another. So I am going to label it with that uh, tick marks there as such. So our goal is to figure out why or, or prove that WXYZ is in fact a, a, a rectangle. So looking at this, okay, uh, I cannot say that WX and YZ are parallel. That's just something I cannot do, okay, because uh, even though I have the two um, right angles there, uh, we do not have enough information to suggest that opposite angles are congruent because we know nothing about these angles over here uh, whether or not they are the same. What I do recognize is at the moment right now uh, in the diagram WXZ is a right triangle and I also recognize that YZX is also a right triangle. Because these two are right triangles and I have a pair of legs that are congruent to one another I therefore recognize that um, and also recognizing that ZX is being shared, which is the hypotenuse, I can therefore declare that the two right triangles are going to be congruent using hypotenuse leg. So, and because of the fact that these are uh, right triangles and they are congruent, I can then declare that these corresponding parts of congruent triangles therefore must be congruent. And just by inspection right now, I immediately recognize that WXYZ must be a parallelogram because opposite sides are parallel, but I also recognize that WXYZ is not just a parallelogram, it is in fact a rectangle because what I have here is in this quadrilateral there is a right angle, which I've stated early on in you know going through this logically with you guys, that angle W and angle Y are both right angles. So therefore WXYZ must be a right angle. Uh, must be a rectangle. So let's put all this down into uh, into words so that it makes sense, okay, so that we can articulate this. It, it is super important, okay, that you not only be able to articulate this um, like verbally, but you be able to articulate this on paper, pen and paper, okay? A lot of things gets lost in translation. Math is one of those things where our language is super precise, okay? And there's absolutely no confusion as to what we're trying to say. What we say is exactly what we mean. So let's take a look. So for line four, okay, one of the first things that we can do is to suggest um, that angle W and angle Y are in fact right angles. And that was one of the first things that we had done. We um, established that those right angles, those perpendiculars will form right angles. And the reason is perpendicular lines form right angles. That seems appropriate, doesn't it? Right? All right, line number five, okay? After we've declared that the two are right angles, okay? Remember, our approach was to show that the two right triangles are congruent. And in order for us to do that, we're going to use hypotenuse leg. We need to declare that the two triangles are sharing a hypotenuse. So then we have to say Z, XZ must be congruent to XZ because of the reflexive property, because the two are being shared and also recognizing that XZ will equal to itself. So immediately, just from this, 
this is actually enough information because I have a hypotenuse and I have a leg and I have right angles. So this is enough for me to declare that the two right triangles are in fact going to be congruent because of, again, hypotenuse leg. Line number seven, once we've declared that the two tri right triangles are in fact congruent based on hypotenuse leg, we can then also declare that the side lengths WZ and XY are going to be congruent because, again, understanding that corresponding parts of congruent triangles therefore must be congruent. And then last but not least, okay, we can say this all in one step. We don't need to, we don't need to say this in multiple steps, okay? Uh, we can say that opposite sides, because we have WX uh, is congruent to YZ and WZ is congruent to YX, that the, those opposite sides are congruent and we have right angles. We can combine them all together. That because we have opposite sides are congruent, that makes it a parallelogram, and because we have a right angle, we have, therefore, in fact, WXYZ must be a rectangle. Opposite sides are congruent with one right angle.